Hi and welcome to another Tabitha's Glass Emporium YouTube video. Today I want to showcase a few of my products. I don't normally do this because I like to give you things that you can do without it, but I think you can adapt this with what you have if you don't want to buy my Marini, but I've made some wicked stuff and I just really want to share it. Um, we're going to do a sort of garden, um, well it's a sort of abstracty garden um, on a kind of background like this. So first of all you need to pre-fuse this. It's too fiddly to not create this and tack fuse it. So I'm going to quickly show you how to do that. Um, piece of white, this happens to be dense white because I had it in the scrap. I keep the top edge wavy, I like doing that. Um, and then you need to put your masks on. I'm sure you'll be able to hear me through the mask. And I don't need my glasses on at the moment, so I'm going to take them off before they steam up. So I'm taking a bit of spring green, 1426, and I'm going to put that at the bottom. This is transparent onto the white, so you need to do a fairly thick layer to get the colour to come through. Um, if you have a look here, you can see it's not that intense and that was still a pretty thick layer so once i put the spring green down you can do this i get these wooden things pick it up reclaim it back in now i'm not going to do that for the rest because as you know you can do that and um i want to do this quickly so light transparent green next 1107 Slightly darker than the spring green. And then I'm going to put some light turquoise, that's 1416 at the top. Again, a nice thick layer of that. As you can see, I'm holding these, the tea, um, tea sifters. I fill them up kind of there. I hold it at the end and I tap and move it around to get a nice covering. That's the method I find that works. And then I just like to, as always, add a little bit of light of entering 1412. Um, just to give a little bit of, sort of blending and texture. So that's that. Let's stick the lid. So I'm going to take this off now. Um, next, we're going to want to do the trees. Now, I've just done the trees with a paintbrush. And literally, I've gone in and said, I want to, if you can imagine, if I turn the paintbrush this way or this way, it's a flat one, I will get a narrow or wider trunk. So if I want to put a I'm not worried there's a bit of green going up into the sky. It's all This is going to be quite abstract. I'm going to do a narrower tree, so I'm pretty much turning it on its side. I might even choose a smaller paintbrush and go for a really kind of narrow tree here. I'm going back to my thicker one. Now that has knocked it slightly, so I'm just going to go over this a little bit. I don't really want to do that too much, though. And then maybe one more here. You'll see at the bottom I'm sort of variegated, varying where I'm starting the trunks from. Um, just gives a bit more kind of feel to it. So this will go in the kiln on a very light tack fuse. Um, the schedule for the light tack fuse will be at the end. In fact, it's the same schedule we're going to use to, to put the um, other bits on because we want... A, a, um, these particular bits have kind of fantastic detail and if you do a too heavy tack fuse you lose the detail so I'm just going to put this to one side so I have a pre-fired one here and um, I wanted to quickly run through the various products I've made 
So you have my green stringers you can use, but I've now also made um, a kind of more expressive stringers with a bit more kind of um, details in them. They've got kind of bendy ones like this with a bud at the top. Um, these flat variegated with sort of shape in them, a bit of twisty, um, some smaller kind of bends which are really nice to use. Um, kind of twisted buds like this and then also the um, spirals you've got one spirals that with the flat um, spirals and some round spirals too we're going to be selling this lot in 14 euros 50 for a hundred grams it's slightly more than the, the normal stringers but that will automatically come in a box um, and you're getting all these kind of interesting kind of shapes in them and you can buy a box that will last you for a long time that's for a hundred grams um, We've also done these Bluebells and Lily of the Valley, um, which I love. You can see these little samples we've made to showcase them. You want a light tack fuse, these. If you go too heavy on your fusing, um, they lose definition a little bit. Sorry, I'm going to get some samples of ones I did. And I went to 750 centigrade um, and they lost a bit of their definition so I'm probably going to keep to about 730. I will put that in the firing schedule that will be the light tax reason for you guys who use Fahrenheit that will be there. Um, but I love these I think they're great. We've also got these leaves I've made uh, these are kind of um, French vanilla um, and spring green and these are venturine uh, and these pink ones. These have French vanilla and do react and go quite brown after you fired them, so it's well worth realising that, but they're still beautiful. So I want to put some things together. I'm going to put my glasses on because I'm going to cut the stringers with mosaic nippers. Um, and I'm going to do a very kind of, uh, sort of, quick composition. I'm not going to think too long and hard about it. I just want to get something laid down. It's great if you've got kind of these. Ones to sort of. Some of these are too thin even from mosaic necklace. You just need to break them with your fingers. Now I'm also looking for kind of different heights. Um, I want things to be some shorter, some longer. Um, I'm sort of getting a rough composition with the green bits and then I'm just going to use a bit of gel over the top to just hold them in place. It will just help them kind of not move around. You could use the red instead which will kind of, you know, go underneath but I often find just a little bit of kind of gel like that will just stop them moving around quite so much. Um, and now I'm going to think about what flowers I want to put where. So I've added all these little bits um, to make a sort of flowery scene. It's almost like a bunch of flowers. <coughs> but I quite like to add um, a bit of sort of foreground. Uh, I don't know, I think I'm sure I've talked about these before, the mint and adventuring green um, frit, the balls I do. I love this stuff. Um, this is the extra large. I'm just going to put a bit of the blue gel glue down and then kind of tend to just take a kind of bigger handful but sometimes with these things you need to think before you do this stuff about how you're going to mount it for instance um if you're going to put this in a sort of slot it into a a holder like 
something like this, then you need to make sure that your, your widths are all one thing. Um, if you put too much on here, it'll be too fat for that. If you're gonna mount it on wall hanging pieces like these are up here, then you need to make sure that you've got areas clear for those pieces to slot into. I've made a, you know, a big piece before and then had a nightmare of actually where to mount it and it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't great because I just didn't think about that um, in advance, which uh, you should do. So I'm just gonna put these on. For this, um, I think I've probably put it in a box frame. So that's the extra, um, extra large. Now I'm just going to get some of the course for it and put some of that in between. And then again, my favourite light inventory in course has a little bit of sparkle and slightly darker as well. It's sort of it's kind of the shadows of in the piece. Move these down. Now, because we've got this area here, which I'm thinking I need to add something. Um, we've got the spirals. Uh, well, these are quite thin, so you can probably, ooh, yeah, just break it like that. Um, and I can put a spiral in there. Um, I might also sort of maybe even put something down the middle of the spiral, so when it fuses it's all going to kind of fuse together um, and I've got the medium for it and I'm just going to put and let some of that sort of drift up now with these what's nice is you can these are kind of quite thick fat ones you can cut them at a bit of an angle and then then sort of like the points of leaves. And I don't even mind if it goes slightly on, not like that, um, slightly on top of something else, because this is sort of very, very organic. Of course, it's now not going where I wanted to go at all. Try that way out. And they can be a little bit tricky because they're very organic shapes. But you can always use a bit of the blue gel glue to get them in place so just use your mosaic nippers to kind of cut down and then you've got some nice organic shape like that actually let me move this on mute for a sec put this down and as you can see this is much more tricky than kind of the other ones which is why you need to pre-fuse the powder on first. So I have a sort of tendency of just sort of adding more texture, I'd say, to a composition until I feel happy with it. I'm just adding some um, medium green for it. This is olive green and I've got some pea pod. Um, here, I'm then also going to add a bit of pink medium for it, um, just to sort of give the idea that there could be other flowers in the background. Um, so I've got some, that was cranberry pink transparent. This is pink opal. I've got some Neo Lavender. This is a transparent Neo Lavender. I would rather be using them. Oh, I actually do have some opals, so that's better. 
then all these are quite pale so it's, again because I sort of feel it needs a bit more punch I'm going to, I've got the um cram the Caribbean blue and white um medium frit um so I'm just going to put a little bit of that around So I feel that this is kind of missing something in the middle here um, and lucky for me I have some of my excels to hand so I just thought I'd put them, I'm using tweezers and then dunking them in a blob of glue I've just stuck on the table. Live one, and you know, for me, these don't have to represent proper sort of flowers in any way, they can just be what looks nice, what you like. If any of you have done um, Dream Garden, that's an AE video, fantastic, really worth doing. Um, that's a great way to learn how to do landscapes or um, if you live in England Clare Hall does some great landscape classes they're brilliant to take lastly I'm going to add three little bumblebees um, these are bumblebee marini because what flower garden isn't complete without a bumblebee or two. And there we go. Now I'll go in the kiln, as I said, on a very light tap, and we'll see how it comes out. This is now out of the kiln. As we took it to such a low tack fuse, it's really kept the definition in the petals, which I love. I think it's a really nice piece and it's worked out really well. I like a lot the um, floral stringers here and how they've added to the project. We decided to have a go at a couple of other projects using the floral stringers. This one here is using in the background strips of different types of streaky glass fused together in one big panel. And then we added the details on top. I then decided to use the other piece of glass that I created and did the tack fuse on and created this abstract flower scene. And I'm so pleased how it turned out that I wanted to quickly run through how that was made. I'm not going to prepare another back piece, but if you imagine this piece of green glass is like the, the trees at the back. I basically take some floral stringers, in this case it was three, I put them down, I would probably use a bit of um, gel glue to get them down. Now we have this product called um, confe uh, Confetti Frit. This is the hollows left from pulling cane and we mix them together in various different colours. This is. Um, a pink one and then you've got a sort of stripy pinstripe one here and then this one over here is a bluebell. They come in kind of uh, from as big a pieces as this to as smaller pieces like Frit. To break them up a bit more you must wear goggles, these go everywhere. When I create these from the tubes I literally end up with shards of glass in my hair, I come down my top. And the other day after doing it for a long time, I found one in my bed. So please be careful, wear glasses, you know, watch where these are going. So you've either got your mosaic nippers or your wheel cutters. Um, you can kind of, with the nippers it's good because you can get down the tube and kind of cut them off like this. Or with the cutters it's more kind of going across but as I say do watch it it does sort of go everywhere um, and you just want to cut them into whatever sort of sizes you want these are actually hollow bluebells and so you can just sort of cut them up and they end up 
irregular shardy shapes of frit. So once I had done that, I put down some glue and using these shards, I added them to the piece following the lines of the stringer. I haven't particularly gone with trying to be any kind of flower here. There are lots of the flowers that have these stalks and long, um, long bits of flowers, uh, flower, um, flowers all up them. Um, and for me, it's just a sort of imaginary one of those. This is about 50 grams here. And it costs three euros 95. Um, probably not gonna need all of it. So once I've done that, as you can see on this, I've also added a bit of other things. I've added a few marini, just to give a bit of detail. On this one, I've added a bit of frit and a few marini, uh, and the same with this one. And then you want to create some interest at the bottom. So at the bottom here, I've used the green variegated extra large coarse frit from Bullseye some of the brown variegated, some of the twirly um, uh, twirly stringers we do in our floral stringer packs. I used a few scrappy um, spring leaf marini here and then just built it up with some extra stringers on top. I've added a couple of bumblebees to add another little kind of something to it but you don't really need those and it's just I think with all these sort of projects is you add a bit more until it feels good to you. Um, on this one, when I put it in the kiln, I hadn't added these thin stringers. And then I was looking at it as I was putting it in the kiln and thought, oh, it wouldn't be nice with a couple of stringers. And what I like, it's really hard to see, is that some of them aren't even touched down. It gives a really lovely 3D effect because they're sort of sitting up on, on the glass as, as they've kind of almost slumped over, uh, which has worked really nicely. So I hope you have a, um, have a go at this project and uh, give it a go and see what you come up with. You can try any colours, you could do all three the same, you could try them differently. Uh, you could use just Bullseye's normal confetti for this or just Frit. Um, it's a great project to try and if you like this one, please subscribe to my videos.